In this video, I want to talk about catalysts and activation energy. So let's start off with some formal definitions. So a catalyst increases the rate of a reaction without actually acting as a reactant or a product. Activation energy is the energy which must be available for some chemical system to undergo a specified reaction. So activation energy is sort of the initial barrier in terms of energy that you have to overcome in order to get a reaction started. Once you're over that hump, so to speak, once an, a chemical system has been supplied with its activation energy, it'll pretty much proceed spontaneously from there. So an analogy I like to think about for activation energy is imagine you're out in the woods and you're trying to start a fire without a lighter. The initial barrier is trying to get that fire started, right? That's the activation energy. Once the fire is started, however, it'll pretty much proceed on spontaneously. You just have to maintain it a little bit. A catalyst in this context would be like lighter fluid. It significantly lowers that energy barrier to getting the fire started and really catalyzes the reaction. It helps you overcome that initial hump, that initial energy barrier, so that you can start the fire and then from there, it's fairly easy to maintain. So catalysts, as you can see, lower a reaction's activation energy, and they do this by participating in the reaction. They actually allow it to proceed through a different or alternate lower energy mechanism. So they get you to the same end result, we're still gonna start the fire, but they actually do it through a different mechanism. A lighter helps you start a fire differently than if you were to rub a piece of wood with friction. So a catalyst reacts at one step, and then it is reformed at another step. So this is important. Catalysts can be reused as many times as you want because they're always reformed. And it's important to note that catalysts do not actually change the thermodynamics of a reaction. In other words, they don't change the energy of the reactants or the products. They just change how you get from reactants to products. So I've represented this graphically down here. You can see on the y-axis I have energy. So up here is the highest energy, the most unstable state. Down here is the lowest energy or the most stable state. And you can see on the x-axis, this is just the extent of a reaction. And in blue here, I have a reaction coordinate without a catalyst. So without a catalyst, we may look like what it does in blue here. We start out with our reactants over here at this energy level. Then we have to overcome our activation energy. And you can see I've labeled the activation energy with EA. It's the difference between the energy of the reactants and the highest energy point of the reaction coordinate. Then once we achieve that activation energy, it's all downhill from there, right? the reaction pretty much proceeds spontaneously. If we were to add a catalyst to that blue reaction, it turns into something like what you see in red here. So you see you still end up with the same reactants and products, but the catalyst lowers the activation energy and allows the reaction to proceed through an alternate lower energy mechanism. You can think about this blue hump here as like a mountain. If you're over here and you wanna get over here, your reactants and products, you could go all the way up that blue mountain and then all the way back down. What a catalyst does for you, however, is it sort of digs a tunnel through the mountain so that you can climb through it without actually having to go to the top and you still get to your desired result. So it lowers the activation energy and allows you to proceed through a different lower energy mechanism. So I really hope this made sense. If it helped you out, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next video.